Hi everyone, I'm Natalie from SoHungryHippie.com and this is another Friday live sesh, welcome. I'm so happy to be here. I wanted to let you know that I do have braces on now even though you can't see them and so if I sound a little funny it's because I'm getting used to talking again <laughs> with something always in my mouth. So there's that. First up today, I'm going to show you some new things that have come in, talk about some things that are going to be here in the next couple of days, and then I'm going to do a sewing demo. And it's about labels, which somebody requested not too long ago, both the flat and the fold sewing labels. So is everything going okay, Ramel? Yeah. All right, so let's just get into it. I think I will move back and forth between the front camera and the top camera. Uh, Wednesday, I showed on that quickie live sesh that I did have some Tula Pink products just in, including this watery, glittery Maker's Journal. I have four left. So if you'd like one of these, grab it soon. For project bags, I believe I have two left of each kind. So if you didn't see that on Wednesday, this is a quick recap. Just wanted to let you know. I expect those to be gone by the weekend for sure. Okay, next up, I had some questions about, hi, hi everyone. I had some questions about the glitter webbing, expressly the black color. Right now, this is a 10 yard bundle. So it is not much, like not big. A lot of people envision 10 yards as like this big wheel. This is 10 yards, so I think you could use this up on one or two bags. Well, not one bag. Two bags, maybe three bags, depending on the pattern you're using, but it's very doable. So right now in black, I only have the 10 yards left. The five yards are out. But every other color of the glitter webbing, we do have five yard bundles available. Oh, awesome, Barbara. Sunny day in North Carolina. It's not sunny here. <laughs> What'd you say? Oh, cool. Ramel has done some research and he's going to be able to clip these products if you're watching on YouTube right into your comment stream. So that's pretty cool. Thanks, Ramel. Uh, okay, next up, somebody had asked for the sassy aprons in the child version. So we have all three versions now. We have plus size, we have the a regular original size and we have the kids version. I don't have the kids listed yet. It will be today. I'm going to go home early today and get that in the computer. Thank you for whoever asked for that. Uh, let's see. Zipper caps. Nancy, hello. Awesome. Hi, Barbara. Hi, Zipper cap ends. These have been restocked this morning. Hi, Deidre. So, when I'm, I, oh, I lifted this up because this is the Annette by Swoon. And see how I did like a tab here? What you could do instead of this is put on one of these metal caps. And you just kind of fold the zipper tape under and then you glue on, or sometimes there's a screw. These have screws. You could do both even. I've done both. And slip on that metal end cap. And it looks super professional. I think Tamara's probably done that before, right, Tamara? You've used the zipper end caps. So I have these in all the colors. Rainbow is currently out of stock. It'll be here soon. And in a package, you get eight of them. So it'll last you a long time. Really good deal. I like those a lot. Um, next up, I saw Roxanne here. Uh, let's see, I wanted to show you I had a lot of fun the other day. Because we have so much fabric arriving in the next few days, I needed to uh, consolidate some bolts. And many of my bolts only had a few, like one or two yards left on the bolt, and I had to move those out. So I made little two yard bundles of coordinating fabrics. And I think they're so pretty. I even packaged them nice because I love, you know, I care about packaging. <laughs> so you can find these in the store. It's under two yard bundle, and I, I did yard as YD. And some of them don't have pictures yet. They will by the weekend. For the Sunday email, it'll have all the pictures. This is echinacea and lupine. 
It's a perfect match with the center of that cone flower. Hi, Evelyn. So I don't think I even have all the options listed. This is the one that I posted on Facebook this morning, this Frida fabric with a black and white polka dot, two yards. So this would be awesome to make a large bag, such as the Essentials tote or a large Santorini if you're going anywhere. Uh, the Bohemian carpet bag, which I brought my sample. I have to show that later. Don't let me forget that, Ramel. I'm, I actually sewed this week during the weeknight, and I want to show you guys what I made. Uh, I did crossover fabric collections, so whatever I felt was a perfect match, I put it together, such as this Tula pink Baby Geo and this Anna Maria print. I didn't catch that, Ramel. That was too fast. Uh, so, just know that it's awesome coordinating fabrics. I wanted to show you the pink hair one. This one, her pink hair and this pink print, it's like a perfect match. It's so good. I had a lot of fun doing those the other night. So, we've got those in the shop. Nancy says she only uses the metal zip ends. Yeah. Yeah, it's so good, isn't it, Nancy? I'm kind of half and half. Sometimes I do the vinyl, sometimes I do the end cap. Just depends on my mood, I guess. But I do love that product, so I brought it back. Speaking of, yeah, they're not, they're not difficult to put on, for sure. Um, speaking of new product, we have new employees, and they have been busy working so hard putting amazing stuff together for you. Big thanks to Dodie for putting together some kits and Sue for cutting a bunch of scrap packs and helping put zippers together and all kinds of stuff. I'm so excited with everything coming in. But right now, I have listed the Diva Frame Wallet. We have a couple of kits. This one is black cork with a coordinating fabric. Maybe I should just take this overhead. I'm thinking about listing the pattern and the frames separately as well. I also, Sue is a pro bag sewer, and she told me that the mini diva is no harder to sew than the regular size. So I bought a bunch of these patterns as well with the frames. So we will get your opinion on that. But this kit right now here is the diva wallet and ev absolutely everything you need just sew this up. It's a gunmetal frame. You know I'm going to color coordinate all this. Black and white striped zipper, black cork, Anna Maria fabric that goes perfectly. Look at the blue. Pulls out, oh you can't see that on the camera. It pulls out the blue flex in the cork perfectly. Can you sure, if you can. If, can you see it? It looks, seems like there, maybe a little bit there. Oh, yeah. it's, it's just perfect. And it's all packaged nicely in here with the interfacing and everything. These wallets take a little bit of time, but once you do one, you will love it. And in fact, oh, I think I left my purse in the car, didn't I, Ramel? I was going to show them my wallet, but that's okay. Uh, my wallet, I showed it last week. That was the Diva wallet that my mom made. Here's this kit. This is the natural cork, frame, cork, coordinating zipper. Isn't that pretty? Gold frame, wonderful fabric. This is from Paintbrush Studios and the interfacing. Look at that. It's just a perfect match. No, I think it's okay. Uh, so there are those. I will have pictures this weekend and just look for those in your Sunday email. And do let me know if you're interested in just the frames or just the patterns or both or anything like that. Okay, so there's that. Um, I made, has uh, y'all, what? Okay, let's bring it. Oh, yoga was canceled. What bag is the one next to you, please? That is the Annette bag by Swoon. I have these patterns in the shop. I made my sample with 
bronze metallic moon glow vinyl, my sewable leather straps, and metallic bronze and black zipper, which I just restocked as well. And this is elixir fabric. So one side I did with a fabric accent and the other side I did mostly vinyl. On this curved piece, I think it's easier to just do it with fabric. I tried it with vinyl and it was just too pesky. I did use this purse for a while. I hope it's not dirty. Uh, any, uh... I made a mini diva years ago. It was easy, says Gina. I thought the large would be tough. Now I need to try it. Try it. I have heard from so many people that it, it takes some time, but it's uh, not difficult. Penny says, are there pockets inside the wallet? Yes, many pockets. There are credit card pockets. There are larger pockets for cash, a checkbook, um, miscellaneous items like your vaccine card or your Red Cross card or whatever. Um, yeah, tons of pockets on both sides. Ooh, Tamara. What'd Tamara say? My sweet, so sister Claudia and I are considering making a road trip to your shop in August. Awesome. I hope you come up. <laughs> That's awesome. It's funny because I always schedule my trips out months ahead of time, usually. And I think in May we're going to go to Chicago to a conference with Sarah, right, and Danny? Yeah. So I'll be in the area, sort of, in May. Um, that Annette is so good. Oh, thanks, Elizabeth. Have you made this before, Elizabeth? Did I ask you that already? Because I really like the shape of this. And I did. I used foam on the body, I believe, didn't I? Yeah, I used foam, with, but just not foam on the pockets, just the vinyl and fabric on the pockets. And I super duper love it. Oh, and all this hardware. So this pattern also has these little doohickeys on the side, these square rectangles where you could do a long strap. Yes, Angie, of course, because I know it's, that pattern is super popular. It's been out for a long time. It's by so many creations. If you all don't know her, go say hi. Uh, so yes, I'll have an option without the pattern, for sure. I try to do that. Regarding that, Alexander Henry Frida fabric, your pomegranate moon glow vinyl matches like they were meant to be. Thank you, Nancy, for saying that. You know what's funny is I get sent swatches from the vinyl factory that I work with, and I try to do that. I really try. And sometimes it works, and sometimes it's like a total miss. But yeah, that one I was really pleased with. It does look good with the watermelon, too, if you want a brighter one. Yes, of course, Clovis. Yep, that's right, Sarah. Um, let's see here. I guess we should get into the demo, but I feel like, oh, you know what? Let me show you my bag. I'm so happy with it. Oh, I'm like, oh, 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 it must be the coffee. I also just got the Brooklyn pattern in from Swoon. I made this years ago when it was in Bag of the Month Club, which, by the way, I'm a sponsor for. Head on over there if you're not in it. It's super fun. Uh, Ooh, the, it worked. Did it? Yeah. Sweet. The Brooklyn pattern is now here. I don't know what I did with my sample. I either gave it to somebody or I sold the bag. I made the small size, and I really loved it. Um, and it has a good option for vinyl accent on the bottom and the handle bits. The rest, I think I did mine with fabric at that time with the vinyl accents. And I don't remember it being difficult. You just, you know, whenever you're with a pattern, go slowly, read things 14 times, highlight, make notes, treat it like your best friend who needs a lot of attention uh, because you'll have better success that way if you're not trying to rush through it. Easier said than done. Um, okay. One more show, and then I'll get into the demo. Ramel, will you hand me that bag on the couch? I know that means you. Yeah, I just sewed this up this week. So unlike me, I didn't start and stop in one go. I took one night to do most of it, and then the next night I came back and finished up like the last few steps. And I absolutely love it. This is the Bohemian carpet bag. This uses the large 16-inch frame. I have the pattern 
in the shop. I have the frames and I'm going to have your kits. We're going to have two different colorways. This kit is using the wide back Ruby Star uh, oh, Reverie. I love it. This is Moon Glow Champagne. It was a perfect match. I'm hysterically laughing because this looks like a face, doesn't it? Like two eyes and a face. I added the rivets because I notoriously load down my bags like a small child going in here. And so me, the first thing that fails is the straps. So I just added rivets. I didn't get that back on straight. So embarrassing. But I also, this was an experiment. So you can tell that I pieced the strap here. If you have a full roll of vinyl, you just cut the straps first, and then you don't have to piece anything. I wasn't planning right. So there's that. I, I don't have the kit on the store just yet, but it's going to be very soon. I'll have it in this, and I'll have it in the Ruby Star Honey kind of check print that I super love. Dodi put a lot of those kits together already. So I think I will probably have to post some a couple of things that I did differently. One was I used foam and fusible fleece. And I, like usual, I did it all the way up. And I think, I mean, I like how this feels and how it grips. It's real, real cushy. But I don't think you'd need it. And honestly, if you're working with a usual home sewing machine, if you did it like I did, you might have trouble at the very end. Because for the uh, frame casing, you're folding all the layers down and stitching. For my Juki 2000, it wasn't a problem. It's not an industrial, but it can handle layers. So if you're working on a singer that can't handle layers, then it would be more difficult. Now, her pattern calls for only fusible fleece, no foam, nothing else. I just, I like my bag uh, to have more body and more structure. So that was cute. Um, so that's why I did that. You know I'm going to play around with things and not follow the pattern. <laughs> Just kidding. So I like this front pocket. There are no pockets inside, which doesn't bother me at all because it's nice and big. This is like a giant Mary Poppins bag, right? I'm going to pull out a lamp. <laughs> I'm going to, Dick Van Dyke is going to jump out. Um, uh, Terry's asking, what is the best foam for lightweight bag and domestic machines? I, I only use soft and stable because my experience, oh, can you get UPS? Oh. <laughs> he could be on camera. Oh. Uh, my experience is Pellon is just a little bit different. So, yeah. Hi, thank you. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, perfect. Oh, wow. Yeah. Andover Fabrics, I think I know what that is. We're going to be able to do a real live unboxing. I know. Awesome. All right, there you go. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Have a great so Friday. Have a good one. Thank you. That is so awesome. Hey, maybe that met him. Yeah, I think, I bet you. Uh, yay. <laughs> So anyways, I will talk to you about this more later, and I'll have kits really soon. This pattern is by actually So Liberated, and I just listed uh, her strata top and her hinterland dress. I did her metamorphic dress, which I wore this week, and I had a whole sew along for that. I don't know if that's still up on my YouTube. I might have removed it. And I've done her Aaronite pants. So, awesome. I think I've done some more patterns, but I can't remember. I can't remember anything anymore. So there's that. All right, let's get into our demo. I am super excited. So the thing about labels, look at all this. i got to move all my stuff. The thing about labels is... You can buy flat ones. Here's my Comet case. This is a free tutorial on my website, by the way. Just saying. So I'm going to show you my three different kinds of labels. I bought 
flat. Sure, can you have the mouse? Okay, I bought flat and I bought two different kinds of double fold woven labels. One is real small and one is a bit larger. So the reason I think you want woven versus a different kind is because these wash well. And so no matter what you're finished making, you can use these. Now the easiest way, of course, is to just directly apply it to the outside of the bag like this. That's the simplest way. I always put a pin here, put a pin here, and then sew around, okay? And I don't move it. What becomes more tricky is when you have the foldable ones and depending how you want it to show. So some people, I like it like this. I like it to sit out like this because that's commercially what's often done. But if you wanted it to sit this way, like on your bag, then you'd put it in a different way. So let me show you really quick. This is a bowl. I did this on a live and I, I unpicked this edge here because I wanted to show you it's not wrong if you have like an open edge and you just stick it in there and sew it down and then curl under the rest of your edges and continue top stitching this closed and just keep going. That's not wrong. I do that often in a pinch. It works great. What I wanted to show you today is how to get it to work like this. I'm just going to unpick this bag, this zipper case. This is a sample, so I don't mind doing it. I'm using my scalpel. I love the scalpel. This is soft vinyl in deep space. Now you'll want to do this before you sew your whole bag together, okay? That's what we're, I already unpicked the lining. I'm just going to take this label out and show you exactly how I put it in. You're probably thinking, why didn't you just make a new bag? Because I didn't have time. <laughs> so let's pull this zipper case out. Now, I would sew this in before sewing up the sides, okay? I'm not going to take it down that much for you guys. I'll just open it up. Let's say, oops, I forgot to put it in. So here we go. I am going to, you would think it would be like this, and it's not. This is how it would sit if you want it to be in your bag and open here, like this, sitting like that. I don't. I want it. I want it to be like this. I want it to stick out. So you're going to sew it right side down with the open part lined up with the edge, provided that your seam allowance is correct. So because mine, my label ends here, it, it kind of ends here. This is the edge where you sew. I want that covered. I just want the cool label to show. I know that I have to place this wherever I'm sewing my seam allowance. Now I can already see mine here. I know my seam allowance is lined up with that edge so that the only thing peeking out is going to be the good label. I'm gonna place the clip. So if your seam allowance, let's pretend it's 5 eighths you'd have to move this label over so that the seam allowance when you're sewing is hitting it much further in. So it might look like that when you're applying. It just depends on your seam allowance. Mine is pretty close to the edge. It's not directly on the edge, but it's really close. So I'm going to pin it, and then I'm going to take it to the machine. Now again, I wouldn't have my sides sewn up at all, so this would be a lot easier. I'm going to line up my needle so that it's right on that seam allowance. Sometimes what I do is I sew with like a three and a half or four and just almost baste it in just to check placement first, and then I'll come back and really sew it in. I'm not even sure I did that right, right there because I'm kind of standing out of the way. 
it's a little tight. My flower is a little bit a little bit cut off, so I'm going to redo it. I want my flower to show. Oh yeah, just pick it. I mean, especially if you have a scalpel, this little thing, it doesn't tear your fabric. It won't tear the vinyl. It's awesome. I love that tool. So I'm just going to replace it. Do it again. The label is still okay. Am I in the way? It's better. It's probably going to be a tiny smidge crooked, but I'm going to carry on. Now I can see where I just sewed. So I'm just sewing right on top to finish the side of the bag to enclose it. And then let's turn this around. Always check placement before you close up your bag, like the lining and all that. That's something I've learned from years of bag making is check all the corners, check all the seams before you close everything up and call it a day. This Janome, this Janome is a Skyline S7. I do love it for quilting. I don't usually use it for bag making if I have thick layers though. So this isn't terrible. I feel like I can do a better job, but it's probably also due to being on camera, so I'm just going to go with it. So you can see how it pops out on the side there, and the right side is showing with the right side of the bag. Okay. So then I would tuck in my lining edges and finish the bag up, which I'm not going to do right now. And there's the label. So again, that's kind of a step up from this kind of application. And the biggest thing about this, for me personally, I have found it's best for me to sew this on to the exterior after I have the majority of the sides sewn. Because once in a while, I've had this not be exactly centered and it really bothers me. So when it's a zipper case or a Santorini tote, you can even put it on last if the stitching doesn't bother you on the inside. It doesn't bother me. That's what I did here. But if you can't do that, if it's a more intricate pattern, measure from the sides. Find Well, what I would do is I would fold my bag in half, make a center crease, fold my label in half, and then I would apply it matching those centering creases. And you can measure too. You can measure if you like that better. Sometimes my, my measuring is wax, so I have to do these little tricks like folding things in half and centering the creases, which is how I have you do it on the Santorini tote, finding the center. <laughs> yeah, question. Do you carry those seam rippers? I do have them. Uh, may need to make the listing live, though. I'll do that right after I get off this live, because these are amazing, and they're super cheap, and you can get the blades. Seam ripper unpicker, I call it. I don't have that one anymore. I only have the green. So I'll get that listed. Because I, I have a bunch in the back. Yeah, so there's that. Any questions about the labels? This vinyl is deep space. Oh, the white pouch, that's an old vinyl. I can't get that anymore, sorry. And it honestly was super thick and hard to sew. <laughs> so I don't have that one anymore. 
Um, I'm trying to think what else. Can you place labels in the lining when using a zipper overlay? Yeah, you can. You, I'm sure you've done that, Dalva, right? So you could put it, you could put it right, uh, tuck it in under the overlay and then top stitch. That would look so cool. I have seen people put it in the side seams of their bag on the lining. I feel like you can't see it as well then, but maybe that's what the, the person wants. Yay, thanks for ordering, Leanne. Uh, yeah, so any more questions, let me know. We'll be checking comments later. Thank you for being so sweet with Michelle. She's been helping me a lot in answering many things. We got flooded with emails this week about stuff, so if the reply is not from me, it is from me in a way because Michelle always talks to me about stuff. So just know it's not because I don't care. It's just because we have so much going on right now, as does everybody. I wanted to share that I will be restocking a few of these crisscross apron kits with coordinated fabrics. This one is super cute, honey. And that will be it for those, I believe. Other than that, I can't think of anything else. Should we draw our winner? Any comment enters you into our weekly winner. So this week's winner is Faith Roberts. Yay! Email me, natalie at sohungryhippie.com, Faith, and I will send your gift. All right, what else, Ramel? You got anything for us? Thank you. Meadow Mirror, I just pushed live. Uh, it's arriving today or tomorrow. Actually, it might have just come in via UPS. We, will sh we shall see. Meadow Mirror by Gingiber is live on the website now. Just know that it might be a couple of days before your package ships if you order today. Uh, let's see, what else? Oh, I wanted to, oh my gosh, the unboxing. Well, I'll just show you. This is not new, but I love this. This is a linen canvas by Alexia Begg for Ruby Star Society. I'm going to have this in the shop. You may do a kit. Let me know if you think of a kit you want. I did order restocking all I could get of Paisley Rose because I love these prints. So I'm going to have those either as kits or possibly fabric. I got the linings that go with them. I had her fat quarter bundles for a long time in the shop, and they're gone now. I think this is probably the last of it. Wouldn't that be a beautiful bag? And then this one just goes perfectly. Love it. Oh, Don reminded me of the next Vinyl Club. Next Friday, the, vin the surprise Vinyl Club goes live. We have been recording videos. We're all ready for you. We're so excited. We're going to do a final count. And then next Friday on the live, you'll hear me talking about that. OK. Natalie, will you get more of the blue and green 10 gauge vinyl? I will, but it won't be until mid to late February. So it's going to be a little bit. I uh, just got in the chambray, so the chambray makes an amazing top. So if you want to try that strata pattern out, you could get this. It softens with every wash. Will you yeah. inbox your Some delivery? Box. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Donna. I needed that reminder. Um, we got some sort of textured vinyls. Uh, vinyls, oh my gosh. Quilting cotton bin. So this reads as like a dark gray, but it's got texture. And this is not just plain cream, it's got texture. So I like those for backings, backgrounds, in quilts and wall hangings, also as bag linings. So if you ever got a cream texture, okay, just a sec. Uh, just know you could use that for background in your quilt or your wall hanging as well as a bag lining. So it's really versatile. What line is a stack of super bright colors you showed? What line? Like right here, Angie? This is Paisley Rose. Or do you mean on Instagram? Uh, are they solids? 
Vethalcona. And I am going to have more stitch happen kits available very soon, within a week and a half. Okay. Any hints? Fun or classic? Fun, Deidre. The all three have iridescence. All three are very bright. Let me think. All three you can sew on your domestic machine, of course. Um, I'm gonna make all three uh, an easy zipper case, and I'm I'm doing a little video for that because I want you to see how all three behave. They're a little bit different. And you said yes, I think solids. Yep, that's my Kona line, which I can't switch the camera over, but that rainbow of colors was for Stitch Happens, the sew along that I'm in the midst of right now, and all Konas. I will have more of those kits soon, and maybe we need to carry the solids just like that because they're so beautiful and bright and happy. I'll be doing them a solid, oh my gosh, Ramel. Hey, what do you think about bringing one of those boxes over at least? And we busting it open just real quick. I, if you have to go, I totally get it, but let, let's try to do a for real unboxing. He's got to remove his headphones and like get up and. <laughs> the top one. The top one? Yeah, sure. Oh, you can bring it here. Yeah, just put it right there on that beautiful table you built. Oh my gosh, yes. Okay, this isn't on the website yet. I am gonna do this as fast as I can, but you need to open your email this Sunday because <laughs> this will be linked. Allison Glass is in the house. This is Sunprint 2023. You guys, these are incredible. These colors. Oh my gosh. So they put all one print in a box. So this is the print that I posted on Facebook with the scarab beetles. It must be a different box. This one is like little flowers or kind of circle things. So <laughs> I don't know what to call it. Um, bubbles, maybe burst bubbles. Ooh, the purple and green. Yeah, I love this. Just imagine this is on camera, so it's not even real life color saturation. This is amazing. I almost want you to just bust one of those open, Ramel. Can you? Can Another you? One? Yeah. Can we show them? Yeah, Super exclusive well. premiere yeah. event. I'll move this one. Ah! Ooh, this one. Oh Lord. That was so nice of Frank to bring them in. Oh, this is the agate. Is that how you say it? Amy corrected me because I think I said agate. You know that rock stuff. Alice in glass. Look at all these colors. Look at this. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. And we get our bookshelves next week, I think Monday or Tuesday. So if you come into the store, we're going to get those up as fast as possible. But right now, it might be a little bit of a mess. I'll post it today, Barbara. Do you want one? I'll reserve one for you. Let me know. You're on the live. You get special treatment. <laughs> That's awesome. I think the Beatles are in there. Can we see it? Not like Abbey Road, but like ancient Egypt. I know. I always throw throw a hammer at you, don't I? Or is that what it's called? Throw a. I don't know. A wrench into it. <laughs> I don't know these colloquialisms. Oh, yeah. Unexpected unbox. Isn't it fun? Gypsy Robin. Well, that's a workout. Ooh. Didn't know you were going to lift weights today, did you?
This is it. Look at these beetles. I love it. My science mom is going to love this. My mom was a science teacher for 19 years or something. Oh my gosh, look at that. That is so cool. Look at these. Can you see it? Ah! All the colors. I hope my table doesn't give out. All right. Look at this white one with pink beetles. Oh my gosh, this is so wicked cool. Do people say that anymore? Wicked cool? Well, I do. So there's that. Ah! Love it. I'm so excited. I'm so happy I could show you guys that. So whether you like the vintagey, which I do a lot, I love that, but I also like this. So it's I think we all have some eclecticism, eclecticness, right? Eclecticity. <laughs> I'm sure Amy's rolling right now because I make up words. I'm going to, um, guess what, Ramel? We're going to leave the shop early today since we're open tomorrow. And I'm going to get these listed for you. I'm going to work from home on the computer, because that's where I take better photos anyways. I have a better uh, window there that gets partial light. So I think it'll be better. So we'll pack up a few orders, Ramel, and then we gotta, we gotta head home and get these on the website. People say, what did, what did Jacqueline say? People say sick now? Yeah. Oh, my kids say that, and I'm just like, what? <laughs> Oh, funny. All right. I think that's it. Now, if you haven't tried out an episode of our podcast, Seems Funny Podcast, listen to the latest episode if you're in the mood for some silliness, I will say. I was cackling, and I was there the first time. But I ho our purpose with that podcast is just to lighten your mood, lift your load, you know, keep you thinking about stuff that happens in everyday life while you're doing maybe the laundry or something, or maybe while you're sewing. That's the chinny chin chin one, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty funny. Uh, so, Seems Funny podcast on Apple or wherever podcasts are, I have no idea. Spotify, yeah, beats me. I just listen on my phone. But that's where it's at. And you can thank Amy, because she is the workhorse behind that one. Amy is Tansy Designs on Instagram. Okay, I think that's it. Thank you so much for being here. I had a really fun time today. I'm so looking forward to the weekend. We're open tomorrow, and I will have the email out to you Sunday. All right, thank you so much for being here. See you next week. Bye.